everyone, Minutia Minute here, coming at you guys with another trade paperback review. Uh, we're taking a little bit of a break from the Wildstorm kick that I've been on the last few Mondays, uh, because I found kind of a holy grail at a local used bookstore uh, about a week ago. Obviously, when it comes to comic books and YouTube, all the attention kind of goes to, you know, hot single issues, books that, you know, are on fire, yada yada yada, speculation, this and that. Uh, but it's kind of surprising just how many trade paperbacks are out there that actually hold quite a bit of value. And there's really a lot of various reasons for why that ends up happening. Uh, publishers are obviously always putting out new comic books, and so there's only so many trades that can be put out or continuously in print, so publisher priorities change. Sometimes you have a situation where it's a licensed comic book and then the publisher no longer holds the right to it, which my guess is the case for what is going on with this particular trade paperback. So the book that I picked up in fairly good condition actually is DC's Uncharted miniseries. So for those of you guys who are watching my channel back in February, you know that I'm a pretty big Uncharted fan. I gave a pretty forgiving review for what was ultimately a pretty mediocre, but nonetheless entertaining movie. Believe it or not, I actually picked up the Uncharted 4K on day one and gave it a rewatch and still found myself enjoying it quite a bit. Although my Nusha wife was like, this feels way more like a video game when you watch it on a TV. And I was like, I don't know, it kind of felt like a video game <laughs> the whole time. So this book, obviously expensive as a trade, even more expensive in single issues. Uh, is a book that I've been really interested in checking out for quite a while. There's not that much uncharted material out there in the wild. Naughty Dog, for whatever reason, has played it fairly close to the chest in terms of, like, multimedia tie-in stuff. Uh, the biggest things I can think of are the movie and then this comic book. I think there may have been a couple novels, possibly? I have to look into that. I might check those out down the road. But in my mind, this is one of the more high-profile ones and possibly the first one that they actually did. Add on top of that, and you've got writing in here by Joshua Williamson, who is sort of my current DC favorite writer right now, and I've just been sort of endlessly curious about it. So I was excited last night to sit down, give it a read, and now share my thoughts with you guys. Um, so first of all, we'll talk about the art. I always like to start with the art. First of all, I want to give a shout out to the cover artist. Uh, Tony Harris does the covers for the first issue or two, um, and I think they look really, really stunning. No one has quite nailed down what Nathan Drake looks like, whether it's interiors or on the covers. It's just kind of a mixed bag, which is interesting because, you know, obviously it's, you know, a 3D rendered video game. It's not particularly cartoony, but I guess it's cartoony enough that it's open to a little bit of interpretation. It's kind of interesting to see what characteristics various artists bring out. Um, because if you skip ahead to the second half of the series, we get art from a new cover artist, Miko Suyan. And apologies if I'm mispronouncing it. Also really great cover art there. A different looking Nathan Drake, but still very clearly Nathan Drake. Here's an even better example actually of it right there. And then of course right on the cover, I kind of breezed over it, but the collection has cover art by Adam Hughes, which also looks really great. Now, looking to the artwork for the interiors of the books, um, we have art in here by Sergio Sandoval, and uh, it's very dynamic. As you can see, there's a lot of sort of emphasis on sort of cartoonish three-dimensionality, I guess you might say. It kind of reminds me of like a Carlos de Anda, um, <laughs> probably another name I'm butchering right there, um, but sort of that kind of a style. Uh, very popular during this time period, especially with tie-ins, like uh, that was around the time that Carl Sando was on Star Wars, and I get very similar vibes with this artwork here. Not my favorite style. I think it has to fit the material really well for me to really get into it, and 75% of the time I would say it doesn't click. 25% of the time it really clicks and I love it, but it really takes a particular type of story for me to be into it. When it comes to Uncharted, I think it's serviceable. I don't think it's incredible because, you know, part of Uncharted is that realism. Now, you're never going to get a Jim Lee <laughs> or someone like that on Uncharted, obviously, but you could do someone that's just a little bit more of a draftsman, a little bit less of a cartoonist, and I think it would probably fit the material better. Uh, the other thing is, while the characters overall are fairly expressive, 
you can see with Nathan Drake actually even right here, it's a little bit of a mixed bag. Uh, and there are times when Nathan Drake comes off wrong. Um, I think the writing is on point for the kind of happy-go-lucky, quippy Nathan Drake that we know from the video games, but the art doesn't always reflect it correctly, and he kind of comes off smarmy, almost. He's got kind of a smirk right here, and I understand what the look is they're trying to convey, and, like, I more or less read it that way. Uh, the other issue I have with the art is really more around the coloring. Um, you certainly get a fair amount of color in here um, at times. For a lot of the book, especially when you get towards the end and they're kind of in this old cave space, it's all just kind of like a blue-gray hue. Here's a perfect example of it, where, you know, it's this amazing ancient architecture, and they're like, whoa, and you look at it and you're like, it's just brown. <laughs> like, there's just nothing else going on there. And I wish they could have found a way to just introduce a little bit more color. So bottom line, art in here is certainly serviceable. It's nothing special, although I wouldn't necessarily expect it to be for like, you know, a mid-2000s video game tie-in book, right? As far as the actual storytelling in here, I already kind of alluded to Joshua Williamson's writing, which for me was very much on point here uh, as far as the characterizations. I think when you read this and you just, you know, think about how they speak in the video games, like you really do hear Nathan Drake, Victor Sullivan brought to life in this in a way that I think, I mean, he just nails it. He absolutely nails it. And if you're really in it for just kind of the fun adventure character, then I think you're actually going to get quite a bit of enjoyment out of this mini series. And Joshua Williamson sort of supports that aesthetic with the story structure, which follows the classic Uncharted storytelling, where you open up with Nathan Drake in this sort of crazy predicament, and then you spend the next half to two-thirds of the series, figuring out, well, how exactly did he end up in that position, <laughs> right? Um, it's not necessarily as bombastic of a moment as you get in a video game, but I think it's very appropriate from a pulp comic book standpoint. I think it marries those two styles quite well, so I would definitely applaud Joshua Williamson for that. And then as the story continues on, it definitely follows the sort of story beats that you get in the video games as well. Now, that works to the story's advantage in terms of sort of that uncharted feeling, but in terms of the actual story that Joshua Williamson is conveying in here, I think it is a little bit of a mixed bag, just because there's a few elements that sort of are left underdeveloped. First of all, this book gives us the first meeting of Chloe Frazier and Nathan Drake, which is cool, especially now that we have a new first meeting in the Uncharted movie. Obviously, different continuity. I'm not sure that Naughty Dog would pay two seconds to this, you know, comic book interpretation of it, or if they had any say in how this came together. Um, but that is definitely sort of supposed to be a highlight of this story, right? You get to find out how fan favorite Chloe met Nathan Drake. And unfortunately... There's not much to it. Like, she just kind of shows up and is sort of unexplained. And he's like, where'd you come from? And she's like, well, I'm interested in the same thing you are. Leave me alone. And then, you know, a couple issues later, she shows up, saves the day, and they just kind of hopscotch back and forth until they're sort of working together. Like, it happens because that's what needs to happen in the story, but that's kind of it. It didn't really give us any additional insight into Chloe as a character, Nathan as a character, or how they sort of interwove together you know you see that happen but the actual character beats that make that happen are really just story driven as opposed to character driven so it just doesn't really land it doesn't feel like it adds all that much the other thing that i find lacking in here a little bit is the antagonist now i'm not talking about like the main foes that you know are competing with nathan drake to get to the hollow earth but i'm talking about the actual inhabitants of the Hollow Earth. So if you've ever played an Uncharted game, you know, you know, when you finally get to the treasure, there's some kind of cursed element, some kind of secondary foe. In Uncharted 2, it's like the Yeti, you know, just some kind of supernatural element that introduces another level of danger for the characters. Now, from a video game standpoint, you know, that's obviously really important because you're introducing new foes that, you know, continues the gameplay, makes the story more challenging. They introduce them here, 
with these sort of eyes and you see bits and pieces of them as a matter of fact they're on the back cover here just hiding in the background sort of these humanoid figures um but you don't really actually get that much interaction with them you have a moment where everybody sort of panics and is just firing into the shadows and then they're all kind of on the run from each other and we just kind of breeze past it it feels like a story moment that's in there because it's something that would be in the uncharted games but isn't necessary for this story or if it is which i actually prefer having it here they needed another issue to really like dive into that and flesh it out because by the time you get past them you know you're in the final two issues you're finding out about the hollow earth you're finding out what happened to the villains you're finding out about subterranean creatures and it's just a lot to pack into just a couple issues especially because joshua williamson does a really good job paying off the primary villains of the piece it's a brother and sister team and their relationship is clearly strained they're in it for different reasons and there is a great payoff to what happens to each of those characters and some of the best art in the book which i can't really show you because it would completely spoil it actually comes from those particular scenes so all in all um i think you know uncharted the dc comics miniseries Probably a mixed bag, but I would definitely err on the side of liking it. Like, I thought it was a lot of fun. Now, you guys know I'm biased. I really love Uncharted. I really like these characters. And we're starved for new Uncharted stuff nowadays because they aren't really actively making any new games. Obviously, there's been rumors. I don't think anything's been confirmed. I'm sure it'll be back at some point, but, you know, right now it's a waiting game. So we got a movie to tide us over. I've got this comic book now, which tided me over, and... It definitely scratched the Uncharted itch, which bottom line is what I wanted it to do. It feels like an Uncharted game. You get to spend time with those characters. It ticks all the boxes, isn't perfect, but is an enjoyable read and something I actually see myself reading again. Honestly, this is sounding a lot like the movie review <laughs> because it is a lot like the movie review, right? Like there's things that they get right, there's things that they get wrong, but you sit down, you watch it and you get that Uncharted feeling and that's kind of enough to make it a B for me, anyway. So, have you guys read this book? What did you think of it? If you did, if you haven't, do you want to check it out? Let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to have a greater conversation about this book. In the meantime, I hope you guys have a great week in comic books, and thanks for watching this video. Take care.